a central thread in my faith journey is evolution. So I got into theology by becoming a theistic evolutionist. I made 300 videos when I was like 14 years old arguing with creationists. Um, and I remained as theistic evolutionist after my conversion to orthodoxy. Um, it was a host of related data which made me question theistic evolution. Um, and I don't, I'm not kicking you out of the church, by the way. Um, I know God definitely worked with me, and I know very uh, pious people who are theistic evolutionists. Um, so I want to make that clear. Uh, the reason I'm a young creationist is because I believe it is true. As to whether it is incompatible with orthodoxy or not, I would say we need a category between theologumenon, that's just a theological opinion, and dogma. Okay, so a theologumenon, you can, you know, disagree, you know, freely and you know, for lack of a better phrase, it's not that big a deal. Dogma is something which on pain of heresy, you must believe. It seems to me, though, that uh, theistic evolution uh, is in strong tension with certain key aspects of Christian theology, but that tension does not necessarily make you um, heretical if you hold to what I take to be an internally consistent opinion. So I think Christianity um, uh, holds that death is a product of the fall, including animal death, because all animals are uh, subject to man, and man is the instrument through which life is communicated to the whole world. So corruption in any part of the world is indicative of corruption in man. Now, while it is true uh, that uh, the creation in Genesis 1 was good, but not perfected, it was an infant world, an egg, which was meant to hatch, the, I think the idea that there was death before the fall, uh, in fact, there was death bef uh, if there was death before the fall, um, that is not just creation which is undeveloped, um, it is rather that creation is severed from the life of God. Corruption indicates not a prior stage of development, but a degradation from what it was originally. And I think that if you hold to corruption before the fall, which is required if you take the conventional view of, of, of Earth history um, to be the case, uh, I, I think um, it creates a, a host of problems. I would also say that orthodoxy holds uh, that scripture is inerrant. Okay, so some people say this is a quote unquote Protestant heresy. It, it, it's, with all due respect, um, it's asinine to see people um, get very upset. And when people say theistic evolution is a dogmatic heresy. And as I just said, um, I, I don't actually put it in that category. Um, and then they will turn around and call inerrancy a Protestant heresy. It's, it's simply, it's ludicrous. It's something which sounds very good, something which, you know, if it were true, it would be a rhetorical knockdown, but it's not true. <laughs> read St. Justin Popovich on how to read the Bible. Read, um, uh, um, St. John of Cron Cronstadt, who says, whenever scripture presents us history, we must believe it to be true. Um, and he says, um, there are cases where it's a parable or something like that, but those are um, evident. Uh, Crimson, I am a young earth uh, creationist. Um, let me be clear here. Um, the conventional narrative of earth history is not stupid. Um, uh, there are, hmm, how do I state this concisely? We shouldn't be dismissive of the um, case for an ancient earth. Now, I happen to think that it's a lot weaker than people imagine it to be. Um, nevertheless, we shouldn't, I, I'm not a fan of the, like, uh, um, to give an extreme example, the Kent Hovind uh, evolution is so stupid thing. And there are, you know, very astute and gifted scientists who 
uh, obviously work within the framework of evolutionary theory. Um, there are, uh, it's a complicated issue, scientifically speaking. Anyway, um, if we take scripture to be true, wherever it speaks on a historical matter, we have to take it to be concretely historical. And that's what essentially all the fathers taught. Um, it's, this is very easy to demonstrate, by the way. Father John Whiteford um, has a, a good article just compiling, uh, I think called uh, a florilegium, right? Just compiling passages from the fathers uh, about the inerrancy of scripture. Now, if that's the case, then if scripture bears witness to uh, a history, the history presented in Genesis 1 to 11, that is incompatible with evolutionary theory, uh, that is incompatible with evolutionary theory, that um, this is indicative that the reconstruction of natural history by mainstream scientists is not true. And I think that, that that's simply the case. Um, Bob Jones, as for opening the mind of an evolutionist, I would say it's through Christ. And it is by not prioritizing evolution. Um, you know, um, since I became creationist, um, uh, I have found many, many, many people who were theistic evolutionists until they, I mean, in all honesty, I know this sounds kind of stuck up until they read my articles and they became creationists. And this is because there are many people out there who genuinely would like to be creationists, but they feel like it would be intellectually dishonest to do so. Um, so I do not find the approach of, say, Answers in Genesis as an organization. There are good people who publish there or who write there, but as an organization, I find the kind of um, highly polemical approach to be counterproductive. Um, I think it is important that we demonstrate in a really robust way that people who understand the sciences, okay, who understand what evolutionary theory is, okay, you can't talk, don't, don't give um, scientific arguments against evolutionary theory, against the antiquity of the earth, unless you actually understand, not to an expert level, but to a reasonable level, you should be able to teach a freshman high school course on it. Um, if, you, if you couldn't do that, honestly, you simply should say, well, I trust what God says, um, and I believe on that basis, but I don't have the scientific data worked out.